Let's go. Shalom, gentlemen. Welcome to our weekly Parsha Shior. B'Sha'at Tova, we're starting a new Chumash, Chumash Devarim, after culminating the first four Chumashim. And this Chumash starts off with the word, Eila Dvarim Asher Diber Moshe El Kol Yisrael, Be'eva Yardain, Bamidbar, Barava, Mosuf, Bein Paran, Uvein Tofel, Vilavan, Vachatzerot, Vedizahav. Wow. So many places. But I thought that the speech of Moshe right now is not in the Midbar, nor in the Arava. Mosuf seems to be next to Yamsuf. No. What is he talking about? Why mention all these places? What does it have to do with the speech of Moshe? Further, a lot of these places, we don't know them. They don't seem to be places that we heard about in our studies from the time Moshe was the leader. So we've so far set up a question. Is there anyone sitting here that didn't understand the question I just explained? I repeat, what are these places about? The Arava, Mosuf, Paran, what are they hinting to? Some of them, we don't know why is Moshe talking, hinting to these places? Question number one. Question number two, Eile Hadvarim. Chumash Devarim is a collection of Neumim, speeches, addresses of Moshe. Why doesn't it say Elu Ami wrote? There's the sayings of Moshe. What does Dvarim have to come and teach us? Dvarim is a more harsh word. Harsh words, excellent. We've been learning that. The Torah seems to be godly and consistent. Mm -hmm. Dibor, as the Talmud says in Mesechah Kiddushin, is harsh words, strict words. Well, why is Moshe speaking strict words? Question number two. Question number three, he mentions in Pasuk Bet, from Mount Sinai, si I'm sorry, Chorev obviously is another name for Mount Sinai. From Chorev on the Har Seir road to Kadesh Barnea is a traveling time of 11 days. The truth is, from Kadesh Barnea, what happened? What a great event happened there. No. Amalek attacked us coming out of Egypt. We sent out the spies, as we learned in Chumash, Bamidbar, in, the, in Shalach, in the place called Kadesh Barnea. From Kadesh Barnea, we were destined to go in to the land of Israel. What happened though? We sinned. We sinned. The name of the sin? <laughs> Speaking bad about the land of Israel. That's right. Chet <laughs> Hamiraglim. Repeat. <laughs> Why only three people repeating? One more time. <laughs> that happened there. Instead of going in after 11 days, although Rashi explains that it only took three days, God performed a miracle. And there we were delayed. We can read the rest by ourselves. From Kadesh Barnea, instead of going in immediately, we were delayed for how, what period of time? 40 years. 40 years. 40 years. And then here in this speech, Moshe tells us the date. Vayihi pasu gimel ba'arba'im shana ba'shtei asa chodesh b'chad l'chodesh. I'm reading verse three. Everyone should be looking inside, reading the Hebrew with me. I'm reading it again. Vayihi verse gimel. Vayihi ba'arba'im shana on verse three. Okay. Ba'shtei asa chodesh b'chad l'chodesh. Tiber Moshe b'nei Yisrael. This speech is happening in month number. 
Verse 3. Pasuk Gimel. What? Month number? Day number? Look at me. Do you know what, Steve, do you know what month 11 is? What, what month is it? No, Adar is number 12. It's, uh, Shvat. Shvat. The first day of the month of Shvat does this speech take place. We know, according to our sages, the date of passing away of Moshe is the month of Adar. Which day of Adar? That's correct, the seventh of Adar. Right? He was born and passed away on the same calendar date. One second, sir. That means the end of our Chumash with the passing away of Moshe explains that this entire Chumash transpires in how many days? 36 days. The month of Shvat is probably short. All of this Chumash is 36 days culmination of the life of Moshe. So if we say, Elad Varim, these are the harsh words. And as we're going to be learning, these are harsh words to rebuke, to remind Am Yisrael of all the places that we fell, that we sinned. So why doesn't he say exactly all the places? Rather, Rashi says in the name of our sages, I want to honor Israel. I don't want to say exactly, but rather hint to the place. Then they'll clearly understand the fashla, the Arab word slang in Israel and Hebrew for the mistake, the fall, the decline of Israel, including the zahav. The zahav. Zahav is? Gold. gold. De zahav, that of gold? Uh -huh. Ah, it's hinting to the sin called chet, the sin of the golden calf. Why does Moshe rebuke Aleph now and Bet? Only hinting to their sins. So he already received Kabbalah for it, so that's why he's only hinting for it? No, he wants to remind this generation that we failed, but yet honor the generation not pour it on and come down on them. Only hint to the places where their parents sin. Remember, the ones that are here now are the children that were under the age of 20. at the time of the sin of Chet Maraglim, sin of the spies. And they witnessed it, their parents, their grandparents of the, all these great sins. And therefore Moshe to dignify, to honor the people. Even though there was sitting in these places, therefore he covers it up to a bit. He only hints to the sins by hinting to the places that are even, not even the, the, the exact places. Molsuf, it's talking about Yamsuf. Which sin did we have in Yamsuf? We wanted to go back. We wanted to go back. Some of the Jewish people asked, are there no more grave sites in Mitzrayim? Many of the Jews rebelled against God, and so on and so forth. Tof Lavan, white. White refers to the color of, what's that food called? The man. That some of the people said, we, we disgusted. It's disgusting already. So do you notice what Moshe is doing? Number one, Eila Dvarim. These are the... Eila Dvarim Asher Diber Moshe. Moshe spoke. Words of rebuke. When? 36 days before his death. When you want to rebuke someone, you don't want to rebuke and say, well, he has time to rebuke us. This is now he's about to die. This is the time it's coming from his heart. It's coming at the right time right now. And therefore, there's no better time that you rebuke someone close to the time of death 
as we learn from Yaakov Avinu, Rashi brings, that Yaakov Avinu rebuked his sons prior to his death. Why is it good to rebuke someone prior to the death of the rebuker? There's no need to rebuke again. He's going to die. And there's no reason for someone else to say, well, no, it's not true. He knows he's saying the truth right now, right before his death. So we've now understanding some of the strategy. But we have a further question. Please tell me. When you learn Torah, I think some of you have been learning Chumash Shmot Vayikra Bamidbar. Is this a standard opening? Eila Hadvarim Asher Diber Moshe? Is that a is that a phrase that appears often in the Torah, or something else instead appears in the Torah? And what do you want to add? What? He said, Vayomer Hashem Moshe. What are you going to add? What? Which word? No? Okay, no, that, other than Vayomer. Vayidaber Hashem Moshe. Throughout four Chumashim, look at this. We have Vayomer Hashem El Moshe. We have Vayidaber Hashem El Moshe. And here what's stated? What's stated here? Eile Hadivarim Asher Diber Moshe. That's a big difference, isn't it? Is, is it all clear to us? Something new here. Yes. Is it clear to us? We're asking a question. No. Like you added, lay more. Lay more. Meaning, Moshe has to. These are the words. Moshe. Okay. Further questions? Okay. So, uh, I know. Uh, question on the wording. So, normally when it talks about. The, the people, it says B'nai Yisrael, but now it's saying... Just Yisrael. Well, it's saying Kol Yisrael. Very nice. That's to all of Israel also. That's another good point, I, I, that it's to all of Israel. Everyone has to hear this. The entire the nation plays. must hear this speech. That's right. Gentlemen, if this is the last 36 days of Moshe's life, what great event Stands in front of us. The what? The entrance, the entrance into the land of Canaan, the land of Israel. But before we get to that, we want to understand what's happening here. Elad Varim. And what will be the designation or the purpose of this speech as we go on? There are many that raise the question, we don't understand this chumash tvarim. What's going on here? These are the words that Moshe said. Well, it's not God. It's not God saying it. Otherwise, he would have said, Vayomer Hashem el Moshe. This chumash is indeed unique. This chumash is nicknamed Mishnei Torah. Can you repeat that? Mishnei from the word? Repeat Lishanein is to repeat. Shnayim is two. A repetition of Torah. However, however, I'm only going to bring here the approach of the great Rav Yitzchak Dona Barbanel in Spain. And he, his explanation, I want to share with you, is the question that he asks is this chumash from the mouth of God, like all the other chumashem? Or is it Moshe, by his initiative? Moshe, mi pi atzmo, by himself. <coughs> For instance, I want to share with you, where did I see it? Okay. Where did I see it? Where 
Where did I see the klalot? The curses. Um, one second, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. So I don't see exactly what I was looking for. Chaval, I should have underlined it. I learned it on Shabbat. I couldn't underline things. My dear friends, the Nachmanidi, Nachmanidis, Abarbanel explains the following. Really, Moshe initiated. These speeches are all his mind. However, who is Moshe? Who is Moshe? Moshe is the greatest of all prophets that ever was and will be for the Jewish people. When things come out of his throat, it's the highest level of prophecy. However, coming out of his throat, he initiated this. It's not from God. But when God hears his words, the Abrabinal says, Hashem says, go with it. Write it in the Chumash. I accept it. Because Moshe is the closest entity to God in the world. His mind, his soul is so godly, is so full of Torah. Therefore, in spite of the fact, it does not say, Vayomer Hashem El Moshe, like it says in the Four Chum Hashem, or Vayidaber Hashem El Moshe, like it says in the Four Chum Hashem. Here, indeed, there's a new opening that we never meet up with. Eila Dvarim, these are the words, the speeches. Asher Diber Moshe, that Moshe is speaking. Moshe Rabbeinu knows he's about to die. He now wants to get the nation ready. Do you have any questions about Torah and mitzvot? Are you ready to go into the land of Israel? I'm not going in. It's clear he's not going in. So unlike the four Muchumashim, that the words of God to Moshe, lay more for Moshe to say them, the Arbarbanel explains, and there are others that go in this direction. Moshe wrote this Chumash, like he wrote the other four Chumashim. How? God said, I'm going with it. It's good. Go ahead. Write it down. But who initiated it? You understand the difference? This is what the Abarbanel explains in his great introduction uh, to this Chumash. Because there were those that were asking, it's unlike, maybe... Maybe Chumash, there were those that asked the question, maybe Chumash Tvarim is not as holy as the four Chumashim. Why not? Because it doesn't start off with Vayidaber Hashem and Moshe Lemur. So therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu turns to the nation in his last speeches. It's a collection of speeches throughout the 30, what is it, 35 chapters? Throughout these 35 chapters, and for the benefit of Hirsch, 30, 30, we're going to tell him that this entire Chumash transpires over how many days we said? 36 days. Or you can actually say, well, after 36 days, yeah, Moshe was, was buried. And then it really says at the end, uh, does it say they mourn for 30 days? Yeah, they do say 30 days. So you can say 36 plus another 30 for the mourning of Moshe. But as far as Moshe's life, the last 36 days. Now the objective of this Chumash, Aleph, to rebuke the nation. They, if they want to live a life in Eretz Yisrael, they must remember what happened in the past. Number one, they have to know, these are the places where we fell, where we stumbled, as it states here. But, to know the uniqueness of the Jewish people, like you said before, by the way, Eila Advarim in Gematria, the word Eila is how much? Uh, 36. Uh, Eila Advarim. These are the days of Moshe, the words of Moshe. But also, El Kol Yisrael, all of Israel, has to sense <coughs> connected together with unity. Then the Torah is even greater. When we have or showing unity, we have the greatness of the power of the Jewish people. And that's what he's explaining here. 
And there, he goes over all these places where we sinned. Now, throughout this Chumash, Ramban, Nachmanides explains the following. He's explaining to the nation, the nation, the generation that's going into the Eretz Yisrael, he reviews mitzvot. Do you have any questions? Yeah, you. Do you have any questions about these Tariag mitzvot? Any questions about korbanot? About the Canaanites? A lot of matters regarding Kohanim are not mentioned here. A lot of matters regarding sacrifices are not mentioned here. Those were already explained in the previous Chumashim. Kohanim are very quick and alert, Nachmanides explains. They don't need the check, the review, like others need them. The Jewish people as a nation need review. The laws of going to war, the laws of idolatry in, in, in Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, many matters of idolatry are written in this Chumash because there's a fear. There's a great fear. We stumbled in idolatry. Who remembers with who? The children of the daughters of Midian. The daughters of Midian. The poor, the idolatry. We stumbled. 24,000 died in a plague. In a plague. So many matters of Avodah Zarah idolatry will be mentioned here. Further, many new mitzvot that are not written in previous Chumashim are given at Sinai. They're written here. Yibum, marrying your sister-in-law. Motzi Shemra, divorce. Edim Zomimim, plotting witnesses. Everything was given at Sinai. Don't misunderstand. In fact... Have you heard of the, those great scholars that enumerated, counted the mitzvot, like the Sefer Achinoch? Have you heard of the Sefer Achinoch? Okay, we have him over here. He enumerates, he counts in this book, 200 mitzvot mentioned here that are not mentioned in the previous Chumashim. Now, the basic idea of Moshe Rabbeinu, look, this nation who's now the nation going in. They experienced so many difficulties in these 40 years, didn't they? Right? Their parents died out. The flaws, the mistakes, the sins that happened, the terrible tragedies that happened. We saw it happening. Miriam passed away then. Aaron passed away. We saw the snakes, the serpents killing us. Fire. Are you ready, guys, to go in? Are you a little reluctant? Yeah, you with the beard. Are you a little hesitant? Are you fearful? What do all of you think? Let me ask each and every one of you. What do you think they, the nation, needs most right now? What would they need most from Moshe Rabbeinu before Moshe dies? By the way, Moshe is not going to be with them going in. What do you think they need, they require from the leadership? What? Moral strength. Moral strength. Beautiful. Beautiful, they have. Moral strength, yes? No, I didn't say what do you want to add? No, I want to add is like, uh, that makes sense. When in the book of Yeshua, like um, Hashem says every time to Yeshua, now be strength and courage. And, uh, Chazak. Uh, encouragement. Beautiful. Moral strength. Encouragement. You want to add, Moshe? Yeah. So, um, I don't know who wrote this commentary here, I think it was probably Rav Nelson Sherman, but um, it, it mentions here that like the book of Devarim is like the last, the, the, it's called the last will and tes testament of Moshe Rabbeinu. That's what we said, the last speeches of yeah. Moshe Rabbeinu, that's exactly right. But, but, like, but our point is, I'm asking all of you, can you pinpoint what should be the message of Moshe Rabbeinu? Two answers we heard here. Leav says moral support David adds, encouragement. Anyone want to add to that anything? Yeshua as a successor? What? No, that we learned already about Yeshua as a successor. We learned that in the book of Bamidbar. Yes. So my dear friends, let's go to the repetition regarding the war. Of verse 4 and 5. Notice this. Acharei koto, after smiting at Sichon Melech Amori, Asher Yoshev Becheshbon, the eight og melech abashan follow the Hebrew asher yoshev bashtarot beedrehi. 
Why is there a need that this speech of Moshe Rabbeinu and his rebuke is coming after the military victory over two power houses? One called Sichon, the king of. Hello? Sichon, the king of. Emory, which is a Canaanite nation. And number two, Og, the king of the Bashan. Even two years speaking, this nation, do you, we retreated going down south regarding Sichon is attacking us and they already captured in this last will and testament that we won the war against Sichon and Og. This is exactly the matter. I heard in a shur of one of my rebbe's Rav Kashtil, the claim of the spies. We cannot overcome who? Uh, the Canaanites. Amalek in the south. The Canaanites in the north. Is that, we're surrounded everywhere. What will be the countering speech? Motivation. Encouragement. The story of Sichon and the war against them in Og, what does it contribute to the encouragement of the nation? Gentlemen, please look now at chapter 2. We're going to see much more of it in the upcoming days. We have historical context in chapter 2 regarding verse 9 and 10. Regarding Moab, that we're not allowed to take the land from them. And who was holding on to the lands of Moab prior to this in verse 10? Ha'emim. What do I care of a nation called Emim? And they're also refined their giants. Whereas eh, we're told later regarding eh, Ammon, not to go to war with them. And verse 20, we're told that who lived in the Ammonite lands? Zamzumim. What do I care? What is this, a history book? Do you all see where I'm pointing to in chapter 2? Now verse 20. And furthermore, in verse 23, who are living in Chatzirim and Tulaza, the Avim, we're going to see this in further detail, God willing, maybe tomorrow or the next day afterwards. Why does the Torah give us the historical background? Who was living in these lands? Listen what the Ramban says briefly and I'll explain to you right now. Ammon, Moab, and Edom overcame major military powers. They conquered areas that were told the names of this, historically, the nations that were living in those lands. What is this, a history course for three credits in the University of Cuba? What's going on here? What do I have to know about? Who is it? What do I care? This is Torah, it's not history. But if the Torah writes these places, as the Ramban says, there must be spiritual significance. Answer. God allowed Ammon, Moab, and Edom to overcome Three military powers. Why? They only won that, those wars out of miracles. Why? Because Edom, who comes from Esav, is the brother of Ammon and Moab, were the children of Lot. That's why God miraculously allowed them to win wars over powerhouses. Comes Moshe Rabbeinu to encourage the nation. You're going to go into the land of Canaan and you're going to face fierce nations. But do you know what you did already? You already won wars against Sichon and Og. Who did they overpower? They overpowered Ammon, Moab. Ah, and Ammon and Moab overpowered other nations. So why did Ammon and Moab overpower those nations? Because of the family of Avram Avinu. 
Ah, and God helps the family of Rav Avinu? What about the nation of Israel? Are they the family of Avram Avinu? You bet your, you bet your bets. What's the word again? You bet your, slicha, that's, that's not proper language. You bet that what God will help the Jewish people, he helped you win over Sichon and Og. Therefore, certainly, he will help you win over the Canaanite nations. Do you now understand? Okay? The Ramban is explaining that this speech is a speech of moral encouragement, strengthening the mindset of the Jewish people that they are going to go into the land of Israel. And just like they won the war against Sichon and Og, so too will they win the war. That means the major subject in speech number one is that if God did miracles to these nations, Ammon, Moab, and Edom, to win over powerhouses mentioned, the Amim, the Zamzumim, as we're going to see in chapter two, he helped them because they are the children, the family of Avram Avinu. Kal have you heard the term in the oral Torah? Even the more so, will God help Israel capture Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, as you're getting closer to there, Moshe's speech will be to encourage and support Israel. You are the children of Avram Avinu. You're going to win the war. Questions or comments? Everything, either you don't understand anything or everything is so clear. No one has a question? Everything is so, is it clear? What am I explaining? Yes? I do, just a more general question. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking at the Targum Unculus of for uh, Perak uh, Bet in uh, Pesach Zion. It says, uh, in mind in parentheses, uh, Nun Aleph. It means, uh, I, I don't know what that stands for. It's another it version. Another version. So, um, I, I, I've never seen it or I've never noticed before. Um, what, 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 is it, what, what, with this there could be hand, handing another, handing down of another version from Uncle is just like we what see. The differences in the meaning. I don't know. I don't know. We'll get to that privately or afterwards uh, by ourselves. Okay. Gentlemen, let's go now. Continue learning. Pasuk K verse five. Be'eve Yarden, Be'eretz Moav. That's where Moshe is. We're in the lowland area of Moav. In verse five, follow the reading. Ho'il Moshe. Moshe began. Some of you may even know that Rashi brings regarding the explanation of the Torah. Last call? Anyone not understand something in the Torah that I've explained for 40 years? Moshe Rabbeinu, what is he doing for 40 years? He's explaining the Torah to the men and children of Israel. Correct? And now he's going to explain it and Rashi brings... That this explanation will be even in 70 languages. 70 languages? Psh, why the number 70? The Sfatemet, the Admur of Hasidut Gur, brings the name of his dear father called the Chidushe Harim. His father was a great Hasidic uh, leader. What do we need the Torah to be translated into 70 languages? I'm sorry, why is that have to be explained in 70 languages? Rather, there are 70 nations in the world, like you said, that represents 70 levels that they're going to be opposition, contention to the Torah of the Jewish people. But Moshe Rabbeinu explaining it in 70 levels, 70 languages, he's going to bring the light of the Torah to such a great level that, you know what? When we meet up with 70 nations and the Galut, we will have the instruments, the potential of living a life of Torah, even though in Europe and these nations, in South America, in Africa and other places, we're being contended, we're being threatened by outsiders, we'll be able to connect to Torah, even though we're going to be meeting up with difficult situations. So the idea is teaching 70 levels of thing the Galut. Before then, there were 70 years in the Galut. 
we will have the ability of the world. Okay? God spoke with us in Chorev. Again, Chorev, a nickname for? Sinai. Rav Lachem Shevet Baharazah. It's enough. Anyone remember the amount of time we were parked at Sinai? A year less 10 days. We said we learned that in the book of Shemot and, and Bamidbar. Pinu, he's repeating a commandment that we got from God. Turn. Usulachem, I'm reading verse 7. Follow the Hebrew. Pinu Usulachem. Uvo Harem Ori. Let's start turning and traveling towards the Emorite Mountains. Vel Kol Shechinav. And to all its neighbors, meaning going into the land of Israel, Ba'arava, the Arava is in the valley, Bahar in the mountain, Vashvila, the lowland, Uva Negev in the south, the dry land, Uva Chofayam, Eretz HaKnani Valvanon. Why is Lebanon mentioned? Why is Lebanon mentioned? It could be Eretz HaKnani Valvanon, the Lebanese mountains, which are up north, where Asher is. But maybe Lebanon can stand for another very important mountain some of you know. Which mountain is nicknamed Lebanon? The Temple Mount is nicknamed Lebanon. What root do you see in the word Lebanon? Lavan. Why is the Temple Mount nicknamed Lavan? Uh, like insecurity. Purity. Like mountain? Laundering. Mm. cleansing, whitening, bleaching. Okay? So here he mentions Eretz HaKanani, the, the Canaanite land, Valvanon, and the Lebanon land, meaning it could mean either up north, the Pshat, or it could simply mean as well the mountain of uh, Moria, Adanahar Gadol Nahar Prat, which is the Euphrates River, that's the northeast mountain. That's where we're heading for. That's where we're heading for. You might say, gentlemen, that what Moshe Rabbeinu mentions here could be can a, uh, a contradiction or not to what we learned in last week's parsha. Huh? There we were really indeed commanded to capture until Nachal Prat. Okay? And here it also says Prat. So maybe it's talking about the same type of matters. So we'll have to think about that and treat that at another time. But it's clear to us that these are the commandments. Let's get moving from Sinai to go into the land of Israel. All of this, of course, is before which great sin? Chetem Raglim. But there Moshe says, he repeats his speech in verse 8. Natati lifnechem et arts. Notice the word natati. In which tense? Is the word natati mean? First person past tense. Past. What do you mean God gave it to you? Maybe you want to go lay down somewhere else. You're very tired, I'm sure. Okay? It's re'e natati. Okay? That's Imagine the Rav ever being tired of you. Given. It's yours. We have to go ahead and assume. How? Bo urshut. Lavraham. God already swore to each of the forefathers to give you this land. Moshe Rabbeinu is saying, look, I'm connecting you to your ancestors, to your forefathers. Your great-grandfather is Avram Avinu. Your great-grandfather is Yitzchak and Yaakov. I swore to them to give them this land. You, the nation right now, you have to assume this. You have to go in and take it. Pasuk Tet. Moshe Rabbeinu had that a hard time. Va'omar alaychem in verse 9, and I said to you, Ba'ita ilay more, la'uchal levadi se'etetchem. Moshe Rabbeinu says, I have a problem. I have a problem as a leader, a lone leader. I can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. How can I, can I, how can I manage this? Do you remember the situation at Sinai? Yitro sees that his son-in-law working day and night, from the morning until the evening. Yitro, the father, says, wow, wow, wow. If this keeps on going on, what's going to happen to you, Moshe? You're going to burn out. You're going to burn out. In the language of the Torah, navol tibol, you're going to wither away like a plant, withers away. You won't be able, 
you wouldn't have enough stamina to contain. He opens up the office hours at 8 o'clock in the morning, closes up shop at 8 at night or something like that. There's a long line of people and they're all waiting to speak and ask questions from? From Moshe Rabbeinu. He can't do this alone. I think that at the time he was like very anxious and very excited because they went out of Egypt. So I, he thought that he could deal with everything. Moshe was given the position to be the teacher. That's why he got the nickname Rabbeinu. He doesn't want to give it to anyone else. He knows all the meaning of the Torah. He knows all the oral Torah. Every day from the morning to the night, he's treating cases, court cases, explaining, reading Torah. His father says, oh my goodness, Navolti Bo. And there we see what did Yitro come up with? What idea did he come up with? A system of a division of labor. Ministers, judges, different levels of courts. And only will difficult, most difficult cases or undecided cases go to Moshe Rabbeinu. But let's go to the small claims court, higher claims, and so on and so forth. Okay? Uh-oh. Let's say Yitro was not yet a convert. Can we accept that idea that he gave to Moshe Rabbeinu? Isn't he a non-Jew yet? Maybe only converted thereafter. What's the answer to that question? Yes. Explain. There was no Torah yet given, right? Torah was given. Oh. We're, allowed to, we're allowed to take wisdom from the nation. Very nice. The Talmud says, Torah bagoyim al ta'amin. Chokhma bagoyim ta'amin. Values, morals, Torah, what's good and not good. Don't, don't believe. Don't accept what the nations are going to tell you. Chokhma, wisdom? How to divide labor? How to utilize resources? How to utilize intellectual powers of the Jewish people in order to alleviate from Moshe Rabbeinu the concern of Yitro, the father-in-law, that he's going to wither away? Of course. That's related to what you said. Chokhmah. That's a wisdom. Therefore, there's no problem accepting from the Gentiles. Tell everyone the car that you drive in. Yeah, don't say. What kind of car do you have? Um, a Volvo. Yeah. In Sweden, they, they ride Volvos. The Volvo is a Jewish company? I didn't think so. Therefore, you can buy Volvo and get to the Beit Midrash in time. Okay? You can uh, take a, a Japanese Casio watch. Is it Japanese? And, uh-oh, it's the time of Kriyachma. And we do the mitzvah of the Kriyachma in virtue of the Japanese, that they gave you a good watch, that you know until when the time of Kriyachma is in the morning. So therefore, Yitro's suggestion is, belongs to the, the realm of Chokhmah, wisdom, and not the realm of Torah. It's, it's like uh, we today believe in gravity. It's because we believe in? In gravity. 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 Because of, uh, sure. That's right. Science, sure. Science. Right. Don't stand on top of the building and float and think mm -hmm. you're going to keep on floating. You're going to come down. So we want to be with feet on the ground. Is that okay? Yeah. Put your feet on the ground. It's very important. Don't float in the air. Let's go through the speech of Moshe Rabbein. Let's continue. He warns them in verse 10, Hashem Elokechem here, Baitchem, God quantitatively made you into a great nation. Vinchem Ayom. On the one hand, he made you great in number. On the other hand, he made you like the stars, meaning in, not in volume, but in quality. The Jewish people are like stars. They're lights of Torah. Okay? And he goes through the speech he said in the book of Shemot in verse 11, Hashem Elokevotechem, May God Yosef Alechem, may God add on to you, may give you a blessing, Kachem Elef Pamim, a thousand times. Vivarechetchem Kasher Dibelechem, the nation requires a blessing. But again, Moshe said, I can't do it alone, as he accepted Yitro's suggestion. Pasuk 12 Eicha, you'll notice that in many synagogues is coming Shabbat, unless the Mashiach eh, comes, <laughs> but if he tarries, we're going to read Motei Shabbat, which Megillah? Eicha. So Eicha has a special melody. So too will the word here, Eicha, be read 
in that melody. For instance, Echa esa levadi Torchachem umasachem Verivchem Meaning the Balkore, by large, will change the melody and read this verse like the lamentation of the prophet Yirmiyahu, who started off with the word Echa as well. And every, every year, Parshat Varim comes right before the fast of Tisha B'Av. So here Moshe asked, he can't do this alone. Havu lachem, and then he adopted the suggestion of Yitro, verse 13. Havu lachem, prepare for yourselves, give for yourselves. Anashim, that are what? Chachamim, why? Univonim intelligent. Follow the reading in Hebrew, please, in verse 13. Viduim l'shivtechem, they're known. They're known. They're well known inside their tribe. They could be leaders. Vasimem b'rashachem, I'm going to appoint them to be the heads. Did the nation accept it? Verse 14. Vatanu you answered me. Vatomru, and they said, Tova davar, ashidibarta l'asod, they accepted it. Them leaders, v'sarei meyot. Higher division of labor in order to. And I commanded your what? Your shoftim ba'ita hile more. In other words, I gave them the ability to judge. They need smicha, they need ordination. Moshe Rabbeinu gave them ordination. He gave them recommendations. He coached them. Which part of the oral Torah do we see laws about Dayanim, about judges? Anyone remember? <laughs> In Sanhedrin, there are laws of judges. Where do we see some uh, coaching regarding judges in the Mishnayot that uh, some of you even read in the summertime, springtime and summertime? In Pirkei Avot, right, very good. In Pirkei Avot, in the ethics of our fathers, we learn, for instance, the Mishnah says, be very slow and patient when you're judging a case. Don't just decide so quick. Hear both sides, interrogate, investigate. Moshe Rabbeinu taught the judges how to go ahead in these court cases. Again, verse 16. Shomua ben Achechem, hear your brothers. Ushvatetem tzedek. And judge justly. Beinish, uvein achiv, uvein gero, even a ger toshav. Even if, if amongst the Jewish people, as Rav Sajigon explains, there was a a, a ger toshav, meaning a non-Jew, that's keeping upon himself seven Noahite laws, and there was a court case, he would, he would do it. Or some would say, gero from the word lagur, if there were matters of court cases regarding apartments, resources between two different people, matters of how we divide inheritances, and so on and so forth, Moshe Rabbeinu gave them advice how to do it. Pasuk Yudzayin, verse 17. Lo takiru fanim ba mishpat. Don't show favoritism. Look at the word in Hebrew. When I, want to, I want to explain something. Look how the Torah writes the word favoritism. Lo takiru fanim ba mishpat. Look at me. Lahakir means, to your knowledge, what does lahakir mean? Uh, David, I want to say lahakir lecha chaver I'd like, oh, like to meet you to know. Lakir, to recognize, to know. Panim, what is panim? So, showing a face is favoritism. Lakir panim, verse 17. Lo takiru fanim ba mishpat. When you are commanded to be one of three judges, right? The minimum number of judges is three, as the oral Torah teaches. Ah, your friend all of a sudden is the, uh, is the litigant. He comes to the court case and he's, you know, he's litigating against someone else. Ah, I'll let you win the court case. No such thing. Maybe you should even disqualify yourself if he's your friend. Lo takiru fanim ba mishpat. Kakaton gagadol tishmon. Whether the judgment is what? One, a ten shekels or ten thousand shekels. If it's great or not great, don't show any favoritism. Judge it equally. Lo taguru mipneish. Ah, VIP comes in with his new Audi or Mercedes Benz. Uh-oh. I'm scared. I'm scared to what? That if the truth is that he lost out in the case, I'm scared to tell, to give you the, uh, the, final, uh, the final judgment. Don't be scared of anyone. Only a God. You must judge righteously. Okay? Lotaguru, don't be afraid of anyone. Why? 
If you miss, mess up, if you purposely make a mistake and you grant someone, let's say finances that really doesn't belong to him, then you're going to cause God to involve himself, to rectify and correct the mistake that you made purposely. Don't do it. The mishpat belongs to God. And in fact, God is even amidst the mishpat. Okay? Sometimes when I uh, accompany students and we go to a beitin, I tell them, God taught us that when we're meeting, we're sitting in front of three dayanim. It's as if we're sitting in front of God because God's presence is in front of the beitin. And therefore, we have to go with a lot of aleph, respect, and bet with awe. And I even remind my students, don't even sit down before the Dayan tells us to please sit down. We have to give him respect. He's carrying the Torah on his shoulders. He studied many, many years in yeshiva and, and koilel and taking these exams and all these matters to be a Dayan. Whew. You know what it means to be a Dayan? If you're going to have a hard court case, then bring it to me. Ushmat even, I'll hear it. So here, Moshe Rabbeinu set up, based on his father-in-law's advice, a system of a division of labor that will allow the judges. All this is happening at Sinai. And then follow, following this, we traveled. After being there almost an entire year, verse 19, I commanded the nation of all the things they have to do. Vanisa, Michorev, and then we started traveling. He's reminding the nation, I am the one that did chesed with you. I watched over you at Sinai. I'm, 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 I'm helping you travel from Sinai. Where did you travel and what type of place? Well, would you please tell me how many grocery stores are in this great desert? How many 7-Eleven stores to buy a Slurpee are there? Gadovin no ra. What's so great that it's terrible in it? Snakes, scorpions, difficult things Rashi brings in the name of Chazal here in verse 19. It's a difficult place. Why didn't they attack you? Where were the snakes when we're traveling for so many years? Where are the scorpions? Do you know where they are? They're held back. There's a force. I don't know what button was pressed. But God held back all snakes, scorpions, and wild animals. And when we complained that we don't want to go into Eretz Yisrael, we want to go back to Mitzrayim, there we learned in the book of Bamidbar, quote, Vayishalach Hashem et kol Hashem. And we asked ourselves, why the usage of the word Vayishalach? It didn't say Vayishlach, which means send. Vayishalach, he released. That's how we explained the name of the commentaries. He released them. What do you mean he released them? For 40 years, these snakes and scorpions want to get to us. But Hashem doesn't allow it. When we complained the wrong way, unrightfully, with audacity, with terrible brazenness, then God released them. And they started biting us. And people started dying. Until they come running to Moshe, please pray for us that we be healed. What does Moshe do? He prays. What does God commanded to do? To, to take a, a staff of Nechoshet and put it up this banner up into the sky, high up in the air, and people look up and pray and think about God. If they think and pray about God, what's going to happen to them? Be They'll be healed. This is what the kindness that God did to us. Be encouraged. You're going to be able to cross the Jordan and win a war. God is loving you. He's been so kind to you. And we'll continue this Shi'or tomorrow, Bezat Hashem.